quick tips on Inspire today. Again, motion analysis. Um, yeah, so in the last video, you saw me um, extracting forces, torque, displacement from different kinds of components of this motion analysis. And because it's so easy to set up, I just thought maybe it would be a good idea to just see the process of how, how you do it and without prior knowledge even. So you could just start up importing your geometry like I did here. And um, well, our goal is to set up a motion. So analyze motion uh, would be a good thing. And what does happen? Well, everything falls to the ground. So um, there's gravity enabled and therefore everything is falling in minus set direction. Um, now we want to fix something, right? We want to, for example, say, all right, this base, um, <laughs> you could see the displacement here. Yeah. It falls into eternity. Yeah, um, this would be fixed. And um, the terminus for this is ground. Um, so this is how it's called in, in motion analysis. Ground means fixed. This will not move. If I just run analyze motion again, sorry for this. Um, yeah, everything else will just fall through the ground. Okay, um, then there's this concept of rigid groups. That means groups, components, geometry that uh, relati <laughs> relative, <laughs> oh, sorry, relative to each other has no motion. So rigid groups, rigid, I mean, that makes maybe sense also from rigid components or rigid um, body motion. And yeah, so just that you know. So for example, you would, for example, want to first leave this mode here. Yeah, uh, you want this and this. I just click the wrong button with control. You want to create a rigid group. So how do you do this? Not here. Um, this is here, rigid group. So you could call that whatever. And this would be maybe base and um, now this was not on purpose, but um, maybe we forgot something. So we could just go in here and see what it is. If I double click in here, I should be able to control click and add another thing to it. And then right click and swipe to the left. So now again, I click on base and see all the free components are now selected. So this is a rigid group. Okay, N not much progress. What will happen? Everything else falls to the ground. Okay. Well, now um, we have our rigid groups and our base set up. Now all those things here should be then made with uh, cylinders, right? So that would be joints. So you can see that it's already guessing which joints you would like to do. And so in this case, you just would not have to do anything, but you could also select it by just clicking on the um, pins here one by one. And then also you could also uh, change the behavior of it. But I think pin is fine. We will just create everything here and run it again, see what it is doing. So this works, right? Okay. Um, it now swings and it has no really dampening effect. So it swings really uh, like a bouncing ball between two rigid, perfectly stiff uh, surfaces for eternity. I think you could also see that here. Yeah. So you see, it doesn't really make a lot much of a damping. Um, let's change that. I think in the example, there was a spring. So we just create a spring, for example, between uh, here and here. So you can see it for sure. You could define that more clearly and stuff. But um, yeah, I think um, it was 2.5 in the example, but not sure about this. And there was a preload, but you could calculate it or set it. I'm not sure. I think you could change the length here and then calculate it. For, so for example, if um, LF free length mode is, if that's shorter, then I would have a positive um yeah so you you could you could change this uh for example 100 and i have a positive force uh, pushing to the outward i think let's see um yeah and if i just analyze the part again uh analyze motion sorry there we will see the dampening effect take into place but it's very small so if you see it's dampening but yeah it takes forever to to do this 
And yeah, so there's no real mass behind it. And I think in the example, there was then a motor, which you could just add here by clicking on motor, selecting a surface, and then clicking like you see this with the little check mark, like so. And then, I don't know, uh, it's, it's now at 60 RPMs. I'll just leave it like that, see what it's doing. Now that looks much more like a controlled motion. And this is, I think, very, very close to the example. I think it's calculating for 10 seconds. That's way too far, uh, way too much. You could go to two seconds. I will cover all this um, details, the properties here in a separate video, but know that it's a transient uh, simulation. That means it's time dependent, not really in the frequency domain. And two seconds would be, the, in this case, uh, a shorter period of time, which we are analyzing. And this should look more or less like the example of what we have here. Like, yeah. So you had this 40 Newton of, of force in the beginning, and then it's it's decreasing in force like so and now i think it should have those 100 millimeters we set on free length so there would be no spring force here because the magnitude is zero i will just double click on it to show it a little bit more so here wherever the the black line crosses um the the x-axis that would be the time of zero force then it increases again so that means it compresses out or pushes out um, and then it goes down again. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I hope that helped. If yes, leave a like, if not, leave a dislike and uh, leave a comment what I could do better. I hope to see you in the next video and have a good one. Bye guys.